Are you ready for another episode of GSC at Home? I think we can do a little better than that. I said, are you ready for another episode of GSC at Home? Oh yeah, that was much better. I think I heard someone all the way in Aberdeen on that one. My name is Alicia, and today we are going to be talking about the most exciting topic that I can even think of. In fact, it is so exciting, I'm going to need every single one of you to buckle your seatbelt, put on your safety goggles, and give me a drum roll on your legs. Alright, keep going. You ready? Today's topic is all about... Air. That's right, amazing air. And to tell you a little more about this wonderful force of nature, I have invited a very special guest on the show today, a real life superhero and my personal friend, Captain Vortex. Thank you, Alicia. I'm super happy to be here to talk to everyone today. Like Alicia said, my name is Captain Vortex, and I use my super air powers to fight against the forces of evil. You see, the forces of evil are growing stronger every day. They think air is boring, and they even make fun of it. And the worst of them all are the evil cup gang. <sighs> now, I may be a superhero, but I am only one person. I'm here today to recruit some superhero helpers. What if I told you that you could be a superhero too? And in fact, you already have some super air powers inside of you right now. Let's do a test. Sit or stand a good distance apart from anyone else. Stick your arms out to the side, nice and straight and flap them up and down very quickly. Did you feel the air? <laughs> I thought so. You already have super air powers and you didn't even know about it. So here's the deal. I will share my super top secret technology for how to make your very own vortex cannon if you promise to help me fight against the forces of evil. Do we have a deal? Excellent. First, we need to understand our superpowers. Otherwise, things can get messy. With great power comes great responsibility. We need to understand how air moves and how a vortex cannon can harness that air power. Now, we might not be able to see it, but air is actually made up of many tiny molecules like oxygen, nitrogen, and carbon dioxide. When we feel the air blowing against our face, it's actually these tiny molecules bumping up against us. But what makes these tiny molecules move from one spot to another? The simple answer is pressure. Air is always under pressure, and when that pressure changes, those molecules are jostled about and moved around. Imagine a friend is pushing against you as hard as they can with their hands. If they use enough pressure, they might be able to make you move from one spot to another. When extreme pressure changes happen, air can be moved about so violently that it can create some very impressive forces. Forces like a vortex. Now a vortex is a spinning flow of fluid that can either be a liquid or a gas. We can think of air as a fluid because it flows and can change into many different shapes. A very powerful example of an air vortex that you might recognize is a tornado. Now we talked about tornadoes on a previous episode of GSC at Home. So if that interests you, take a look at our tornado in a bottle video. But our air cannon is actually going to make a different kind of vortex. Now the vortex in our tornado is shaped like a funnel. 
but our vortex today is going to be way cooler because it's shaped like a donut. Scientists call this a torus vortex. A torus vortex is created when a fluid, like air, is forced quickly through a hole. As the air flows through the hole, it starts out as a big ball. But the friction from the edge of the hole, combined with the pressure change as the air escapes, forces the air on the edge of the ball to curl back in on itself, creating a very distinctive donut shape. Hmm, I'm getting kind of hungry. I think we should start making our vortex cannons and test out their powers together. For your vortex cannon, all you need are some simple things you hopefully have around the house. A paper cup, a balloon, a pair of scissors, some tape or rubber bands, and some target practice. First, using your scissors, cut a hole into the bottom of your cup. Now you need to make sure that the hole is not as big as the entire bottom, but slightly smaller. You should end up with the bottom of a cup that looks something like this. Next, we're going to take our balloon and blow it up nice and big. This makes sure that the balloon is nice and stretched and will fit over our cup. Let the air out of the balloon. Bonus points if you make silly noises. Pretty good. Now that our balloon is nice and stretched, we're going to tie a knot in the end of the balloon. Now that we've tied a knot in the end of our balloon, we are going to take our scissors and cut off the top portion of the balloon. You want to make sure to cut a straight line from one side of the balloon to the other at the widest point. Once you're done, your balloon should look a little something like this, with the top portion removed. Next, we're going to take our cup and our cut up balloon. We are going to stretch the balloon over the top of the cup like so. This part is quite tricky, so you might need an extra pair of hands. You should end up with something that looks a little like this, with the balloon on top and the hole on the bottom. Our last step is going to be take some tape and tape around the bottom edge of the balloon to secure it nice and tight to the cup. This will also make sure that there is an airtight seal, which is very important. If you have rubber bands instead of tape, just rubber band around the lip of the cup for the same effect. And there you have it. You have now learned my super secret technology for making your very own vortex cannon. But I think it's about time we test them out. Now, to make your cannon work, point the opening of your cannon towards your target, pull back on the balloon, and let go. Let's give it a shot. Let's try it again, but a little further away. So what's actually happening inside our cannons? When the surface of the balloon snaps forward, it collides with the air molecules inside the cup and pushes them quickly towards the opening. This push causes a chain reaction of high-speed collisions with other air molecules, and the only escape is out the hole. Once the air escapes, the vortex is created by the edge of the hole and the difference in pressure outside the cup. This spinning flow of air can travel great distances without losing lots of momentum, which means our air vortex can pack a powerful punch even from far away. There you have it. Top secret recipe for making your very own vortex cannon. I highly encourage you to improve upon that method, and maybe you can make one as powerful as mine. Use different materials, maybe a different size, and see what you can do. This is an emergency alert. I repeat, this is an emergency alert. Be on the lookout.
the evil cup gang has been spotted in and around the greater Glasgow area. We repeat, the evil cup gang may be in a home near you. If you see them, do not attempt to approach them or talk to them about air. They will only make fun of it. Captain Vortex, if you are listening, we need your help. Let's go get them. Curse you, Captain Vortex! Well, I think that's the last time we'll see the evil cup gang around here. You know, I could really use your help out there fighting against the forces of evil. So I want you to show me and Glasgow Science Center your vortex cannons. Send us a picture or a video so we can see how super they really are. Thank you everyone for joining me today. Tune in next time for more GSC at home and have a super day.